Inconvenient start to my Monday. So I ordered a package and specified door-to-door -door delivery. Now I'm going to pick it up at someone else's door six miles away. I don't know when the concept of door-to-door -door delivery changed. Just the air. Okay, we're back in the man cave. You know what, I love that every single parcel in here is treated as a possible carrier of contraband. <sighs> yeah, so I got told off for filming, but what they did was they opened up the package and then they didn't know what studio foam was and I couldn't really explain it to them. So unfortunately they had to, or I had to sacrifice one panel because they had to slice it open and check for contraband inside. Unbelievable. Apparently no one ships uh, acoustic foam around here. So it's annoying that everything is treated as a possible source of- The man cave is a little bit out of order right now because I'm moving stuff around and changing everything. And of course I'm trying to eliminate the echo around here. And this one arrived, I ordered it a few, few, few weeks back. I went through here in the snail mail system of Panama. So it's been delayed for I think a month now already. Right, so this is another new corner of the man cave. Well, I just basically moved stuff around really. But yeah, it's all a work in progress. Hopefully very, very soon it will be all finalized and everything. So today I wanna to change the format a little bit and start with my first how-to video. So when the first batch of my acoustic foam arrived a few weeks back, I looked up on YouTube how to install them. And to be honest, I never saw any method at all that would A, not damage your wall, and B, allow you to move these acoustic panels again for future moving reasons or just uh, if you wanted to redesign your whole place. So for my first how-to video, I will show you my method of installing acoustic foam without damaging your walls and without damaging the acoustic foam itself. Okay, so for this project, I'll be using the Ultimate Acoustic Studio Bundle 1. A wedge style professional studio acoustic wall panels, which is 12 by 12 inches. I have the 24 by 24 inch here in burgundy color. So to match it all up, I got the 12 by 12 just for uh, some design and variation really. No, but also having smaller panels will allow you to cover more area while leaving some of the bare wall open because it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to cover all of your walls to eliminate the echo. So this pack contains 18 12 by 12 inches. This one got sacrificed because the guy had to cut open and see if there was stuff inside contraband. He was basically looking for a contraband. Anyway, so this is how it looks like. Uh, okay, so this is basically what you need. For obvious reasons, you do need acoustic foam. What I have here is the Ultimate Acoustics 12 by 12s, but obviously you could use whatever brand you want. You also need a lot of cardboard. This is what we'll use to back up the foam and uh, this is basically the support that will help us mount it to the wall. You'll also need command strips, a whole lot of it. This is basically what will enable us to remove the studio acoustic foam in the future. You'll also need box cutters, a pair of scissors, a hot glue gun, and the hot glue themselves. Okay, so we'll start by cutting out the cardboard backing. Any kind of cardboard will do, but I chose this one specifically because it's thin and flexible. So the idea is to cut small right angled corners that will stick to the edge of the foam. In my case, I cut it down to 2 inches. Next, we'll apply hot glue to the cardboard and quickly stick it to the acoustic foam. This would have been actually much simpler if these command strips adhered to the foam, but uh, no it won't. Lastly, we'll mount the command strips to the corners. For sample purposes, I've also glued in a center cardboard piece, but you could actually do without it. Also, to save on command strips, you can actually cut them in half or in three since foam is extremely lightweight. Last is to obviously mount them to the wall. I have already measured where I would mount them, but should you make any mistakes, the beauty of these command strips is that they are easily removed. Again, my objective is to minimize the echo and not to completely deaden the room. Alright, so that concludes today's arts and crafts section of this vlog. <laughs> well, anyway, to be honest, this is just an audio test. And from what I can hear, 
heaps of improvement, still a bit of echo. What I can hear though is the echo is coming from up and down and to alleviate that, the answer is carpet. Thing is, I need to win this debate with Haley whether or not I should get a carpet for the man cave because a lot has been put in this man cave already. But if you put it half fast really, it's not gonna it's not gonna fix it. So for this audio test I have with me the Rode NTG2, it's just boomed right above me. I could touch it right now, but I'm not gonna touch it. I'll give you a shot of how it's set up. Like I said in the previous episodes, shotgun microphones are notorious for picking up echo in the room and most of the time they're barely used indoors. So the objective of this setup is not to completely deaden the room but to minimize it. What I'm using now is 14 one foot by one foot acoustic panels together with uh, four two feet by two feet panels. So that pretty much covers majority of the space in the room already. I've also forgotten about my idea of bringing in another setup table, but instead I'll keep this couch in here. Like I said, I just need to add carpeting because I could really hear that the echo is coming from the floor and from the ceiling. I really don't know what to do with the ceiling, so if you have any idea, maybe you could help me out in the comment section. From what I remember, what I did in my old studio was I hung uh, sound blankets, but that's a bit tasking because uh, we have concrete ceilings here in this apartment too. I don't know if I could install. Also, some updates. Uh, I'm working on my first commercial for this year. So yeah, that's pretty much what's been keeping me busy. I have only one editing machine, so I can do one commercial and the vlog altogether because uh, it's going to kill the machine, really. But uh, as soon as the client approves and as soon as this all gets settled, um, I'm going back to the daily vlog as usual. Right, so that concludes the first ever how-to video. So yeah, I'll pretty much share as much knowledge as I can. And uh, what I'm saying is this is not the end-all be-all way for installing this. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other methods out there. But uh, for me, this is the most uh, cost-effective one because uh, from what I've seen from the previous videos that I've looked up, uh, they pretty much use uh, spray adhesive and that pretty much eliminates future use for the acoustic panels. And like I said, these are affordable, but these are not cheap. And I pretty much would like to use them again if I do rearrange the room or change, change where I am really. Again, like I said, you could probably hear the background noise from the outside, the trucks out there, and then the generator from the next building. This room is not soundproof at all. There's a difference between sound treatment or acoustic treatment and soundproofing. So yeah, I'll see you on the next one again.